Let's talk about the types of filters offered in Vital. Look at all these different types. You're probably asking yourself, what do these mean? How are they different? And how do I use them? We have a lot of options here. Most of the time you're wanting a standard filter, a low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, or peak filter. For your standard filters, Vital has five different designs to choose from. Let's start with these. The first four of these, analog, dirty, ladder, and digital, all give you the same filter types. Let's start with 12 dB and 24 dB roll off. For this type, the blend slider at the top can morph between low pass, band pass, and high pass filters. The resonance amount is set using the slider to the right, and the cutoff is set using the slider at the bottom. You also have drive for adding saturation, a mix knob, and key tracking. Here's the 12 dB roll off. And here's the 24 dB roll off. Next is Notch Blend, which also has a low pass and high pass mode, but rather than having a band pass filter in between, we now have a notch filter. Notch Spread blends between a band pass filter and a notch filter, and it looks and sounds like this. Finally, the BPN filter blends between a bandpass filter, a peak, and a notch filter, hence its name. Now let's look at the different designs. Which one do you pick? Now the quick answer is to pick whichever sounds best for the sound you're making. Each of these filters gives you a different flavor, but if you're watching this video, chances are you'd like to learn more, so let's dive into it a bit. A ladder filter is one of the most iconic designs. The transistor ladder filter was designed by Bob Moog around 1966 and was revolutionary. It allowed the user to change the characteristics of the filter, and it sounded great, and became a key component of the first analog synthesizers that were accessible to musicians. The ladder filter became a huge part of the Moog sound. It is called a ladder filter because the filter schematic, or circuit diagram, looks a bit like a ladder. Vital is attempting to recreate the sound and behavior of the ladder filter. Now I don't have a lot of information on how the analog, dirty, and digital filters are implemented, so we'll run them through a few tests so you can hear how they compare. If you have some insight into these filters, please comment below and share what you know. For our first test, let's leave the drive all the way down, set the resonance all the way down, and put an LF on the cutoff. You'll notice that there isn't a big difference in the sound yet. Let's increase the drive halfway. We can now hear that the dirty type adds a lot of drive and grit to the sound. The drive control has a big impact on this one. Now let's increase the resonance halfway with the drive halfway up. We're now starting to hear the difference now. Let's look at the spectrum. Analog looks smooth. Ladder sounds more resonant. Dirty looks and sounds more saturated. Digital looks and sounds very saturated and has a harsher sound. For our next test, let's turn the drive all the way down, but crank the resonance to its max. To me, digital sounds the smoothest, but it's the least resonant. The others add a bit of grit and different characters to the sound. Finally, let's push it to extremes and let's turn the resonance and drive all the way up. There are a lot more we can do, like check out high pass filters, but you get the point. 
Play around with how each filter type sounds on your basses, leads, pads, and so on. So in general, analog and ladder are the most similar, but there are times where one works better than the other, especially as you play around with the drive and resonance. Dirty sounds grittier and more distorted, and the drive knob has a big impact on the sound. To me, digital often sounds harsher and, well, more digital. But sometimes it can sound smoother and more controlled than the other filters, and it can make a really nice sound, so definitely don't overlook this one. Next, let's move on to diode filters. Now these are slightly different. Diode filters were created by EMS, a competitor to Moog, who was looking to capture the popular sound and flexibility of the latter filter, but didn't want to get sued. To get around this, they came up with the design using diodes in the filter circuit instead of transistors. Because of this, it acts and sounds a little differently than ladder filters. Probably the most famous use of the diode filter was in the Roland TB303 bass synthesizer, which nowadays is best known for making the first acid bass sounds. You may have noticed that the resonance levels are different between the diode and other filters, so you'll need to adjust it a bit when switching between them. You have two diode filter options, low shelf and low cut. They treat the low end roll off differently like this. Before I move on to formant filters, take a moment, consider liking this video and subscribing if it's useful to you. So formant filters are completely different and attempt to model the sound of the human voice. By changing their configuration, you can make different vowel sounds. You have two versions based on their vowels. The A, O, I, E version can make the A, O, I, and E sounds. Instead of cutoff and resonance, these sliders act as an XY control to shape the vowel sound. Here's A. Here's O. I is somewhere around here and E is here. For the AIUO filter, here's A, here's I, U is somewhere around here, and here's O. You also have controls for the strength of the peaks, the spread, which changes the distance between the peaks, and the blend slider is replaced with formant transpose, which moves the filter up and down in pitch. In summary, formant filters are useful for adding flavor or for making talking sense sounds. Comb filters are completely different. They are made by duplicating the signal, adding a tiny delay to one of them, and mixing them back together. This causes a series of peaks and nulls in the frequency response, which produces some wild sounds. If you turn on key tracking and align it exactly to your pitch, you can shape the harmonics and change the character of the sound. When doing this, the best way to set the cutoff is by right-clicking and typing the number of semitones in that you want it to move. Otherwise, you'll get some wild, out-of-tune, inharmonic sounds, which you may or may not want. The blend slider changes the filter in different ways depending on its type, and the resonance slider can increase the resonance in both a positive and negative direction. The cut knob can also change its shape. There are a lot of different types of comb filters, so play around with them and try each one. You can produce some interesting phasing and flanging effects with comb filters. And if you add modulation to the filter, you can get some really extreme sounds.
Another use of the comb filter is to try to emulate the sound of a string using physical modeling. We won't get into the physics, but comb filters can be used to emulate some real-world effects and can help increase the realism of some sounds. But first, we need to talk about self-oscillation. Normally, a filter only shapes the sound of the oscillators, but with the right settings, it can start to oscillate itself. That means that even if the oscillator stops making sound, the filter will continue to generate sound as long as you gave it some sound to get it started. And this can be useful. In this example, I'm going to set the sustain of this pluck to zero so that the sound dies out quickly. Now I'm going to increase the drive and resonance of the filter until it starts to self-oscillate. For this to work, you also need to hold down the note, otherwise the sound will die off. With enough resonance and drive, the analog, dirty, ladder, and diode filters can self-oscillate. The digital informant filters don't do this. The comb filter can sound very good when it self-oscillates at the right amount, and with the right settings can sound like a more realistic pluck string. Let's hear how this sounds. Finally, you have two types of phaser filters, which look a lot like comb filters except with fewer nulls and peaks. You can set the number of nulls and peaks using the blend slider. The resonance slider changes the shape from nulls to peaks, and of course you have the drive mix and key tracking controls, which has a strong impact on the sound. Add some modulation to the cutoff to give it a phaser-like sound. You have both positive and negative phaser filter types, which are made a little bit differently and give you two different flavors to choose from. Finally, Vital now has a feature where you can make custom filter shapes. This is a topic for another video, but I'll briefly show you where to do this. First, select the oscillator spectral filter option. Then hit the edit button and adjust the filter shape. You can also adjust the spectral morph knob to change the effect. I don't know what all this does to the phase of your sound, so be aware. Custom filters were introduced in Vital version 1.5, so make sure you're running this version or later. Here I'm running version 1.5.5, which is now released to the public for free. If you'd like to learn more about Vital or learn about other exciting tools, check out some of these other videos, and I'll see you in the next video.